Welcome to Micah's Introduction to Online Learning. Over the past 20 years, the ways in which curriculum is delivered has developed from offering materials in a traditional classroom setting to hosting courses fully online. On this slide is a sampling of the ways in which online delivery methods have shaped education in recent years. But it is still all about teaching and learning. The delivery method allows for the accommodation of different times and locations. Students can attend class from anywhere they can connect to the internet. Using technologies such as email, online chats, and video conferencing help to improve the online learning experience. One of the ways online courses are unique is the amount of preparation required before the course starts. Course materials, including the course syllabus, should be completed well before the course starts. All assignments and assessment due dates should be clearly stated well in advance. Due to the nature of the online course, interactions with students may occur more often than in a traditional classroom. However, the time will be spent differently with interactions occurring throughout the week as opposed to only during class and office hours. Course content should be chunked into categories so assignments and activities are clearly identifiable. Online activities should be designed to allow students the opportunity to work together in a collaborative environment. Students should be encouraged to post questions in discussion boards. Allow students the opportunity to answer questions posed by their peers. Remember, people learn best by doing. Teaching as instructors, it is important to clearly communicate to students your objectives and expectations for the course. Since you're conducting your course in an online environment, using web tools such as those shown in this slide will enrich students' experience in your class. Again, it is important to have your course created prior to the course start date. By creating your materials fully before the start date, you can build out your complete course within MICA's e-learning environment. Don't forget, clearly communicate your course requirements and expectations to your students. When establishing your presence online, it is always a good practice to let your students know a little bit about yourself. Clearly present your contact information and preferred method of communication. It is helpful for your students if you post the discussion board on your course page to inform students of any upcoming events or important information you feel is necessary for students to know. Make sure you stick to your communication policy. If you do not, you cannot expect your students to. Give your students plenty of feedback on their assignments. This is your opportunity to address any concerns with the student assignments on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And remember, you want to encourage those who need to participate more and praise those who contribute to the class discussion. Here are some tips on what not to do in an online course as the instructor. You want to stress to your students that you are going to be fully engaged throughout the course. If you're not engaged, how can you expect your students to be? When moderating a discussion, you will need to design your questions with as much detail as possible. Remember, this is an online course. You will be unable to clarify questions instantly like in a traditional classroom. Questions should require more than a yes or no answer. You want your students to think critically and synthesize a well thought out response. Here are some examples of discussion questions. Notice how a more detailed question is the appropriate way to go. The more detail you give a student, the more likely they will be to elicit a comprehensive response. Limit student answers to a specific number of paragraphs as seen here, or set a word count limit. This is not likely to happen, but it is always important to remind students to keep their post professional and not to attack other students for their post. Remember, you are a moderator of the discussion. Allow students to discuss. Only jump in if you feel the discussion is moving off topic. If you see a post that you feel needs highlighting, respond with a quick comment to the post. It shows the students that you are reading their posts and that you are engaged in the discussion. 
drawing attention to posts that have yet to receive comments is a good way to guide the discussion in a specific direction. By assigning roles for a discussion and allowing students to moderate a discussion is a good hands-off approach that allows students the opportunity to share and express their understanding of a given topic. Creating private discussion forums to force a debate on a given topic allows students to understand the perspectives of their fellow students. You should state your expectations for students and the course in detail in your syllabus. You do not want to leave any room for misunderstanding. Your syllabus should be a document that students can download and print for their own records. In the syllabus, you should have a course and assignment expectations detailed fully. Try to lay out the pace you expect to go by with a tentative schedule. The syllabus should be present on your course page in an easily accessible location. When designing your course page, it's good practice to break each week's class into its own heading, dividing the syllabus into viewable sections. Canvas is MICA's LMS, or Learning Management System. This web-based system accepts most file types, including PDF, Doc, DocX, PowerPoint, MP4, and JPEG. Remember, your course site should not be a repository of documents. Let your creative side shine when designing your course page. You will want to keep the functionality of your site in mind. Think about accessibility and ease of navigation for the user when designing your course site. To review, your syllabus should contain the following information. Leaving little room for students to misunderstand what is expected of them in your course. The core of instructional design entails envisioning learning outcomes and determining the learning tactics and strategies for producing these outcomes with your learners. In the following slides, we'll discuss some of our best practices for course design in an online environment. When beginning to design your course, always start by clearly formulating the instructional goal. Over 90% of the population is considered visual learners, so create your content with that in mind. Visual learners need to be visually stimulated with nuggets of content. Graphics and visuals in your course should always educate, not decorate. The majority of research shows that decorative graphics are distracting and can hurt the learning process. Instead, use a graphic or photo that illustrates the content and aids the learning process. Animations are a great way to demonstrate to the learners how something works or to focus their attention. However, you must ensure that the animations are adding value to the content and the course. Use bullets and fonts to highlight key concepts for learners without bogging down your presentation or course pages with unnecessary text. When creating a presentation slide with bullet points, use the 6x6 rule. No more than 6 bullets per screen, with 6 words or less per bullet. Whenever offering resources on your course page, Use a picture or image to effectively communicate your idea. Whenever possible, narrate a short video or animation or provide audio rather than presenting an explanation in on-screen text. Always review and revise your designs. Design is a process which goes from complex to simple content development. Write concise lesson plans and map any assessment to the course outcomes. Make sure you're evaluating students against intended outcomes. Each evaluation question should map to an outcome. Prepare assessment questions early in the creation process. This will make things easier as you create content and help keep you on track. Involve students actively in the content through simple activities such as a poll during a Zoom lecture and quizzes immediately following the lecture in Canvas. It's been said that content may be king, but context is the kingdom. Do not just dispense information. Use simulation, case study scenarios, and anything else you can to make learning relevant to the subject matter. Allow for opportunities for students to practice their new skills with a project, providing coaching and plenty of feedback. E-learning without coaching usually does not work for topics that require memorization. Provide students with a quick reference guide of resources, glossaries, web resources, and printed resources. 
This will help foster mental association with common key terms and phrases. Assessment does not always mean a test. How the learner will demonstrate mastery more often than not is through doing something. Knowing enables doing. Create an activity where students create something showing their mastery of the content presented. Scaffold the learning. Give students lots of support in the beginning and then slowly take away supports little by little to move them towards independence. Social learning has been around longer than we've been alive. Now we have the tools that make social learning possible. Leverage these tools in your curriculum development. Create discussion forums to allow students the space for social learning. It is crucial in the learning process for students to be able to discuss the information you provide or the topics you ask them to follow. When learners discuss what they know or share their remarks on the subject, they reflect on the content. Reflection is a deep learning action that allows a longer memorization to take place and it stimulates peers to do the same. Use prescriptive feedback all of the time. People do not learn much just by reading. The teachable moment in any e-learning course comes when the student makes a mistake in a simulation exercise or when answering a question. When they make a mistake, you have their attention. Use feedback to explain why their particular choice or answer is incorrect and how to figure out the correct approach. Do not spoon feed them the correct answer. When using media to enhance learning, worry less about the media and worry more about whether the media is adding to the learning. Sometimes a 10 second video can save you three paragraphs of text. Do not let students passively watch video resources. Ask them to reflect on what they just saw and tie it to the content for the week. This can be done using a discussion forum, a written assignment for submission, or a quiz. When creating small videos for students as a resource, Create a thorough script prior to the recording so that all audio content is short and to the point. Sometimes the best option is not to use multimedia. When using technology, remember to always put learning goals and learners before technology. Using technology to engage your students is not entertainment. It is responding to students' expectations and readiness to learn. Use technology to encourage students to pull information rather than wait for the instructor to push information out. Remember, form follows function. Select the technology that works best for your content and learning goals. A learner-centered classroom does not mean that every whim of the student is entertained or gratified. Thank you for watching. If you would like more help, please reach out to the Center for Teaching Innovation and Exchange at ctie at mica.edu.